Today we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to be talking about DOE for injection molding. And uh, DOE, if if DOE for injection molding is different, and we recognize this. Uh, if, if you'd come to our training back in the early 1990s, and we uh, we would have talked about DOE, and we would have said, you know what, we've seen too many horror stories. DOE for injection molding, don't even bother. There's there's too many problems, and we'll give you an example of that here later in the presentation. Um, but at, at one point uh, in the mid-1990s, we started doing a small amount of injection molding ourselves. We took in on some work from, uh, from, from one of our customers, and we were tasked with bringing in about 30 tools in six months. And we have with about we had a this a new group of about four people. This is a big job, and for us, anyways. And uh, so we developed some simple experiments to center the processes as we brought them in. And these worked pretty well. They were just built in Excel, and uh, fairly straightforward. And these were the we we used these tools to bring in these molds on time. We, we achieved good quality. We learned a lot about our processes. We found it, it fit in well with our quality systems. And so we took this back to our customer and said, said hey, you, you know, this is kind of neat. We thought we'd share this with you, show you, show you what we're doing. And they said, well, congratulations. You just reinvented the designed experiment. And we said, huh, no kidding. I guess we're going to have to learn something more about this. So about that about that time, uh, Bob Lonsby, who's one of the, the gurus of DOE in, in, in the industry, uh, was, was in teaching to a variety of industries, was running into some of the same things that we'd seen in injection molding. He'd go and teach a class on DOE to an injection molder, and strange things would happen, and couldn't explain why. And so he approached us about the same time saying, what's going on? And so we said, well, we just found out we reinvented the DOE. Let's, let's partner together. So we, we, we uh, partnered up in uh, 1998 and created a training session that, uh, that this presentation is based on. So, so uh, since then, we've learned a lot about DOE, and we're going to talk today an introduction, just, just what DOE is, some of the common issues, and how we can, uh, and benefits of design experiments how we can work around, work around those issues, make sure you're successful with designed experiments, and then use that information for setting cavity pressure alarms as well. So designed experiments are, uh, this, this is a, a very simple experimental design where we would take and <coughs> have, say, three factors, say uh, fill speed, we're going to change from low to high, we're going to have hold pressure, low to high, barrel temperature, low to high, and, and if we look at, at two different levels of each of these press settings, we've got eight combinations of runs that we can, we can do. We can high fill speed, high hold pressure, high barrel temperature is this point right up here, low fill speed, low hold pressure, low barrel temperature is this point here, and then everything in between. If we run this full set of experiments, we can fully cal characterize the process and lots of good things, and that's, that's all fine and good. But what's powerful about DOE is that we don't have to run all of eight of these conditions. We can run a balanced subset of four conditions and get effectively the same information. A lot less work lot less cost and get the same information and that's what makes DOE powerful and why f well, fo folks get excited about DOE. So let's look at an example of that, of how that can help us. Um, th here's just a list of a br bunch of experimental designs that are available. The four here means this is a four run experiment. Two factors, two levels, uh, the, what we were just looking at was an eight run experiment, two factors, three levels. That gives us eight runs if we run all possible combinations. Let's look at an experiment where we actually, if, if we had two factors and 
I'm sorry, seven factors. The problem is injection molding is a complicated process. We have so many settings on the press that we can consider in our experiment. We can look at fill speeds, barrel temperatures, melt temperatures, hold time, hold pressure, screw recovery speeds, back pressures. And if we, even if we only run seven of these factors, seven settings from the press, we've got to fully characterize that process, we got 128 runs. But what this says is that in eight runs, we can run up to seven factors. And with our DOE, we can reduce that huge experiment down to eight runs and get not the same. Obviously, we're not going to get the same level of information, but we can get a lot of information with a lot less work and a lot less cost and opti to use that to optimize our processes more quickly, learn uh, uh, what our process windows are. Okay. So the bottom line is these are tools that can be used to improve quality by better understanding our process. Using the, It's a systematic tool for optimizing our processes, giving us better quality, and we can do that with less cost. We can reduce the number of runs through these experimental techniques and we can also what we're going to talk about is using a better understanding of the process as well to reduce these experiments so that we can 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 do this more cost effectively so what's the catch why if this is so great why isn't everybody doing it and here's the problem that and this is the problem that we ran into that we saw back in the early 90s going uh, around the industry is that the traditional DOE says that we've got inputs, these are our machine conditions, our fill speed, hold pressure, transfer positions, all the settings on our press that we can change and it assumes that there's a direct relationship between that and our part characteristics. And, all, and our DOE is going to mathematically model that. And we don't really need to understand what's going on inside the process. The DOE will, will just take care of all that. And let's talk about the problem with this, why this doesn't work. This was an example that we ran into. This is an automotive example of a knit line. So the uh, knit line, the flow front comes together, and we're trying trying to get a nice, strong knit line, and they were having problems with the knit line strength. So they ran a designed experiment using hold pressure, high and low hold pressure, high and low melt temperature, high and low fill speed. Now, for those of you who are familiar with, with knit lines, what what's going to make the strongest knit line we want to get the we want to fill fast get that material while it's still hot and still molten and use high pressures to glue that knit line together really tight okay so we'd expect to see high fill speeds high melt temperatures high hold pressures give us the best part quality the DOE came back and said yeah hold pressure melt temperature those aren't too important but make sure you fill slow That'll optimize your knit line strength. Said, what? That doesn't make any sense. 